Can I start, Kandar? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, once again, very good evening to one and all. And uh, I welcome all of you to this webinar. Basically, it is an awareness webinar that what is dual degree and how SHU, that is Sacred Art University, USA and Indrasil University are collaborating in benefit of students of India and Gujarat. Uh, before going forward, I would like to give you a glimpse of Indrasil University. So let me start with the presentation of Indrasil University. Uh, Indrasil University, it was started uh, by Dr. Rajiv I. Modi in memory of his father and mother. Sri Indravadan Modi and Sri Srimati Shila Ben Modi. Sri Indravadan by Modi, who was the medicine man of India, started Kedila Pharmaceuticals Limited in 1951 in a very small room where Srimati Shila Ben Modi was the first employee of Kedila Pharmaceuticals Limited. And that shows the commitment, enthusiasm, vibrancy, dynamism and integrity of a couple to give an affordable medicine to the people of India. And as a first milestone in 1951, they started Kerala Pharmaceuticals Limited. And to continue with the vision and motto of Kerala Pharmaceuticals Limited, Dr. Rajiv I. Modi continues that with the motto of care continues. And in, as a part of this, initiative of Sri Indravadan by Modi. He started in 2016 Sri Saraswati Education Sanstan that was with a vision to start educational initiative with a vision of life science university, the first of its kind in the India itself. And in 2016, with the starting as a first step towards the education initiative by CPL, in 2018, they started Indrasil University, the first life science university. And it is, uh, you can see the vision that within a one year of Indrasil University, we have achieved the Atal Incubation Center, which is also one of the achievements that a very young university achieved, Atal Incubation Center at its place, which is a flagship startup and entrepreneurship incubator program and in continuation of the same in 2019-20 that is in late 2019 early 2020 we had been achieved with the student startup and innovation program scheme of the government of india so you can see the vision of indrasil university and that was again mentored by the dr j.s yadav who was who is a very pronounced very well-known organic chemistry person of the India and who has achieved and who has been awarded by the Nobel Prize of India that is Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Fellow, J.C. Bose National Fellow. And if you see the credential of Dr. J.S. Yadav, more than 150 patents, 1400 publications, more than 250 PhD students and many more are in queue and 27,000 plus citations. Who is Dr. J. S. Yadav is the provost of Indrasil University. He is also a mentor and director of research of Indrasil University. Indrasil University is having five pillars. Number one, that is the academic excellence. Number two, industrial exposure. Number three, internship and placement. Number four, 360 degree development of the student and number four, global education standards. And in each pillar, industrial university is working very rigorously, very curiously, and working hard to establish this pillar much and much 
stronger that you will see in coming slides so in indrasil university we are offering two major programs one is the school of engineering and second under school of science under school of engineering we are having btech computer science and engineering mechanical engineering chemical and biochemical engineering and above all phd programs are offered in these three major uh, areas under school of science we are offering bsc honors chemistry bsc honors bioscience msc chemistry msc animal biology msc microbiology and phd is also there and as i said under the five pillars one pillar is the global practices so to fulfill that desire of the students we have international collaboration one with the sacred art university usa through which we are having webinar today second is tuskegee university usa and third is the university of newcastle australia under school of engineering considering the need of the student towards the minor specialization we are offering minor specialization in each degree program and that is under computer science and engineering we take chemical and mechanical engineering and chemical and biochemical engineering you can refer the minor specialization program in addition to the phd if i talk about the laboratory facilities under laboratory facilities we have well equipped and highly competitive corporate style laboratory facilities at its place a uh, few of the sophisticated analytical instruments available for use to the students of both the schools at industrial university hplc more than 3 hplcs are available more than 3 gas chromatograph are available more than 2 gcms are available thin layer chromatography ultraviolet uv chamber ftir spectroscopy hot air oven milky water uv trans illuminator uv 96 well plate micro reader similarly you can find out the number of laminar flow chambers number of then mopal furnace autoclave lab general intro instrumentation lab microbiology cell biology microscopes number of microscopes are available refrigerator centrifuges mini centrifuges incubators freezers carl fisher thermal cycle pcrs so you can find out number of such facilities are available it is just a glimpse on from the eyes of camera you can see the level of laboratories or research laboratories are available at indrasil university and above all the crown uh, facility that is the nuclear magnetic resonance resonance that is the nmr spectroscopy and it is widely used to determine the structure of organic molecules it can quantitatively analyze mixture containing known or unknown components and it can be used to determine molecular conformation in solution so the cost itself is more than 3 to 4 crores for such nmr and it is available in indrasil university one and only private university where you can see such kind of facility in gujarat similarly you can see the different photographs of facilities available at indrasil university again as i said the indrasil university is having a very good link with the industry that is internship placement so these pillars are covered with all these uh, mous all these industry linkages and mous are also very focused mous that you can see over here the mous are having focused activities like internship program faculty training guest lectures live projects and research setting up of uh, high high tech laboratories like iot augmented reality center of excellence for skill development industry specific course curriculum where our industry people are also involved in designing the curriculum of the academics and teaching and learning support that is the vice versa activity where you can add it similarly just to give you 360 degree uh, practices to the students all round development of the students that you can see from here industrial internship and visits plus you can see the extra curricular extra curricular extra mural and co curricular activities of the students where they are highly involved and they are achieving the milestone at state level at district level also 
in addition to that as i said that we are giving a platform to the student 360 degree development of the students like you are given all round skill at the same time if you are having certain ideas certain uh, uh, skill in you you can come up with this concept and aic isc foundation at the same time indra sir in which foundation these two are available where you can come up with a project proposal if project proposal scrutinized and found suitable you will be given an access to the world class r and d laboratories you will be provided with the dedicated office and lab space you will be given a provision of 50 lakh kick start support provision of 2 crore seed fund support and renowned mentors from industry from departments from r and d labs everywhere you just name the laboratories national level csir laboratory of india where we are having all kind of mous for internship for student exchange for faculty exchange also and free network access of ais vcs industries everything is available to us so in short if you want to provide if you want to come up to get one platform to nurture your skill to nurture your ideas to nurture your uh, 360 degree development skill or to nurture your education come to the indrasil university.edu.in or you can refer the aicti aicisc foundation.org you can mail us at admission at the rate indrasil university.edu.in or you can directly dial to 6359102727 and you can refer uh, our presence on social media also like facebook twitter and instagram So I hope you got the what is Indrasil University is all about, and within just two years of span, you can see what all well-established university are doing. We have already established that kind of level. So thank you very much. And with this, I would like to invite. I would like to introduce the key person. In addition to our mentors, we have a strategic. project manager with us mr avinand pandya mr avinand pandya is a btech from viswakarma government engineering college in ahmedabad he is a pg dba from narsimhunji institute of management studies he is emba from the mit sloan usa he is a certified frm from grp and certified project management and valuation expert member of RICS Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors UK he started his career as a venture capitalist from GVFL later as investment banker with banks like Kotak Mahindra Standard Chartered and ABN Amro he has over 17 years of extensive experience across multiple phases of business operations including projects financial governance startups business turnarounds expansion policy and regulatory framework strategy formulation and process reengineering mit sloan alumni with techno commercial background who had acted as business advisor for multiple domains with successful track record of delivering tangible outcomes in areas entailing business expansion joint ventures merger and acquisitions clearances and client acquisition and we are fortunate enough to have it at indrasil university under the banner of edila pharma and he is doing wonderful job he is guiding us for the strategic management strategic development of indrasil university and that is why within 2 years with you know blend of like yadav sir and blend of young person like abinan pandya over there we could achieve all the achievements which people are achieving we after 10 years or 15 years so i would like to welcome abinan pandya to the forum and uh, yes mr pandya all is, is yours you can start now thank, thank you amish bhai for a humble introduction over all all the kids over here i would like to say that i am still an engineer and i am still a learner in my life and i'll continue to be a learner 
and first of all good morning to my great colleagues from sacred heart university dr whitek and miss navas who are fortunate enough to be here but before we start with anything you know i would like to take you through my experience as an engineer so can i go through it you know i'll go through both the language dr whitek if you don't mind it in english hindi and gujarati and first of all i'd like to say whoever in this audience is who is born after 94 can you just press yes 94 pachi who is born who are younger guys yeah i can see lot of replies so there are lot of young guys you know why i said 94 there is a reason behind it i don't see lot of guys still moving on because i don't see a young faces so all of this young guys nice to meet you and from me kemcho 94 ni ya baat etle karu chhe ke 94 is the year when i started my engineering and 94 the year if most of you are born after 94 tumne koi ne yaad nahi hoy ke 94 we play we were into similar situation atyana jem covid thyu che 94 gujarat ma there was a plague and the engineering admission started quite late it started in the month of october november so the situation is almost similar and that's why i wanted to take you around and at that point of time i will tell you there was nobody to guide me ki yeah, abhinan engineering ma jaau chhe bas and i went into engineering i did my engineering i did most of the internship and that's why you know after getting into a good interview thing which i cracked it over just because i did lot of internship you know i didn't have great percentage like my topper in the class but still i was able to crack all the interview because mari paas a internship hati that's where you must look forward to any university ke tumne internship nu network aape chhe ke nahi that is more important and afterwards what has happened that i moved into mba but 50% of my colleagues from engineering they went to usa and i'll tell you they are doing fabulously good nobody is earning less than 10000 dollar at present and that's why i wanted to give you a brief background ki why uh, your dream of getting into usa is important i'm talking to you as an engineer i'm not talking to you somebody from indrashil university But there is something which is going to change your life in thinking and thought process so let me give you some interesting fact thoda facts che economics type na che kadaj as a 12th standard pass out students you may not have heard ke usa ni india ni comparison kariye तो जीडीपी इंडिकेटर्स में वेर आर वी फॉलोइंग इफ यू लुक एट द थिंग्स वी आर वे फार बिहाइंड दैट बिकॉज वेर यूएसए वॉज इन 1980 अपने अत्य त्या छे एंड दैट्स व्हाई इन टुडेस वर्ल्ड इन कोविड टाइम यूएसए इज एबल टू प्रिंट आउट नोट्स व्हिच इंडिया मे नॉट बी हमारी अपनी करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट छे એટલા બધા प्रिंटिंग ना करी सके सो रिवाइवल पासिस देयर दे आर एबल टू गिव 1200 डॉलर पर मंथ if you even if you are not earning india cannot do that part because we are in the growth fast like just giving you a fact of it usa ma atyana if you look at it it is three times larger than india and its population is still four times smaller than india so if you look at it lot of money is there and still lot of opportunity is there if you you will be fortunate enough after this presentation if you are not deciding it Oh, let's come to India. Our India na figures che. This is come from AICT. Our the engineers kitla bar pade se. So as per AICT, 15 lakh, 15 lakh engineers are being produced outside. India requires not more than 5-6 lakhs. And if you are good enough in going into industry-oriented colleges, which is giving you internship, then you will definitely get a job. Otherwise, it's very difficult. And over and above that thing, AITs and NITs ma jaise. 50% of iits guys 
they all land up because they realize that the dream is in USA. So what they do is they will crack down GRE. They will land up in USA. So if you look at the overall scenario in India, do you know what is happening in USA? That's the figure from AISSC. US any under one lakh thi ocha engineers bara. At present, atyana bejar adarna apple to apple comparison karu. So, sawa lakh loko jai se. And then still they require more engineers. This is a small figure which going to take you out. That's why I say that. आज चार वर्ष है ना अपना ये चालीस बराबर से इफ यू आर कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग हियर फोर इयर्स यू आर गोइंग टू किक स्टार्ट योर योर फोर्टी इयर्स कोई पर बिल्डिंग वो है जेटली ऊंची जाए ना नो फाउंडेशन एटलू स्ट्रॉंग वो इसे सो आई लाइक दिस कोटेशन फ्रॉम लॉन्ग मैन बिल्डिंग इज ओनली स्ट्रॉंग एज इट इज द फाउंडेशन तमु आज फाउंडेशन है आ चार वर्ष में इफ योर फाउंडेशन इज स्ट्रॉंग देन योर नेक्स्ट फोर्टी इयर्स आर गोइंग टू बी द की अपने गुजराती में कहवा है जीवन न घड़तर है शिक्षण गणतर थे तरह एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग इन टू राइट हेन्ड्स एंड राइट प्लेस यू आर गोइंग टू आउटशाइन मेनी टाइम्स आई हेव सीन देट पार्ट घना वक्त अपन लगे वी आर स्टील इन फ्रॉग लाइक इन ए वेल घना मे मैं हे मारे अमदावाद जेवुँ अमदावाद बहार नहीं जाए बाइक लैने पहुंची जाइस त्या भले इंस्टिट्यूट अंदर फेकल्टी हे कि नहीं होक्विपमेंट हे कि नहीं होटर्नशीप ट्रेनिंग आप हे ना मार बाजू में है जाइस त्या फिल्म स्टार आए थे हूँ त्या जाइस बट देन इज इट गोइंग टू टेक यू टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल आई गीव यू मै एक्जाम्पल वन इयर बेक आई वोज मीटिंग विथ मई क्लासमेट फ्रॉम इंजीनियरिंग इज नेम इज भरत सुदेसा इज ए गुड पोजिशन विथ योको गोवा ही इज डूइंग वेरी वेल and then we discussed that you know we both ended up into some job profile and everything then he said that abhinand you have done one thing much better that you realized and you moved abroad you did some additional degree from mit sloan and you have ended up there i said that pan ha bharat i did this thing after 10 years to bharat e su kidu ba apne dudhi hata ke apne realize nota kari sake apno hath pakdi ne guide karo wado koi no to इंजीनियरिंग में बी यूज टू डेले दूधी क्या जाए इफ यू गेट इन टू एंजीनियरिंग थिंग्स जस्ट लाइक योर थ्री इडियट्स यू विल लर्न ऑल दो ट्रिक्स हाउ इंजीनियर बिहेव सो यू मस्ट रियलाइज के तब लोग आ कूआ मेडक छो कि अलग छो आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक सम ऑफ गाइज फ्रॉम योर सेल्फ ओनली लाइक हार्ड फेरेन अदर्स हु आर फॉर्च्युनेट इनफ टू जॉइन दिस कोर्स any guess which movie any guess from the team which is this movie man lage se koi picture a joi nahi guru guru yes the guru <laughs> movie do you know it's the replica of mr ambani How Mr. Ambani moved ahead. He was living in a small village called Chorwad. I am from Porbandar, nearby village only. Chorwad. He decided that na mare to bar jauch che na father ne kahi ne he went abroad. He got the experience. It's not the degree; it's the experience and the culture which you get outside and the opportunity which get it. It broadens your brain and the mindset. So, are you a part of it or not? you are still thinking then i'll say that something and right you know whether you would like to go so what do you get out of this dual degree basically you are spending 3 years here and one year there and still you are getting fortunate enough to get into even degree in from sacred art university very reputed university and also a chance to do masters from there you know you will be fortunate enough if you do your masters from there so it's like your 4 plus 2 from sacred art university and your career will start flying because it opens up a wide range of career prospect career path is open and you get into a different products atyana usa ma jao tame so why they are asking for a different mindset of products you know there are lot of indians who have become a ceo 
you can name a few just like uh, satya nadella or sundar pichai or even our uh, gujarat engineer pranav mistri they have all moved abroad and they have used their brain an opportunity which is lying there and what else you know i will tell this thing to everybody every us degree have an excellent international reputation aaj jao so fly karine ke i am so and so just like i say i am at is lone alum you can say yeah sacred art alum and you can fly to any country so you can interact with a diverse range of people around you a very global perspective which you get it you study in iu you get a industrial exposure you study in shu you get a global exposure so who else will give you and above all which i like to print it out and tell you everybody a very good american culture and a campus life as such you my colleague is going to tell you about the shu culture and that is going to make you wonder you know ajni tarikh ma i always remember coming out of sloan i have got friends in more than 80 countries so even if i have to go to philippines i can say the ah, mac ne or kuch i can go there if i go to japan i know somebody out there if i have to go to philippines or even finland even to south america everybody i have somebody over there so that is the network which i have built it and that is what is going to make you a global leader and that's why i will say that unwind your wings and fly your wings and move to sacred art this is a small glimpse of the sacred art campus but if you land over there i'm sure you will say that you will dial back to your father and mother wow it's great and that's why i would like to say thank you and i look forward to seeing you at iu campus now i'd like to invite dr voitech to give a small presentation about sacred art and miss nevers because i have shown you the dreams of sacred art but the real dream of sacred art is going to be shown by miss nevers thank you and if any query is there please bang on to iu with my colleagues at uh, kandarb is there shashwat is there anuj is there bhavika is there you can reach to anybody or if you want to come down to campus you can always meet me thank you thank you very much uh, for such a kind introduction and such a good uh, words uh, about sacred heart university this partnership is something that's extremely exciting to us my name is dr voitek voch i'm the executive director of the office of global affairs which is responsible for our institutional relationships and with me here is ms cory nevers who is responsible for international admissions and is looking after the whole process of admitting our students uh, from abroad uh, and right behind me on my uh, little desk there stands the memorandum of understanding that we signed with indrashri university uh, several months ago um, it's a document that we cherish it's a document that's very important for us uh, and it's a document that opens opportunities to students from india and from indrashri university to get that experience that uh, abhinand was referring to directly he went to mit sloan came back and has developed his career in in india i know tens if not hundreds of stories of our students from india coming back to their home country after graduating from sacred heart university after having gone through the opt process uh, which is optional practical training which as abhinand mentioned it's important to have internships we after you graduate the united states gives you the opportunity to actually earn money and live a normal uh, professional life in the united states for a period of up to 3 years after graduation and if you do the computer science uh, focus it is indeed 3 years that you can stay in the us and pursue um, your your professional practice while earning money um, in the united states and then when you come back to india you can make a real difference as a ceo or as another person having gained the american experience uh this mou is also important to us because sacred heart university um is all about internationalizing itself it's all about developing um strong and meaningful relationships both with the universities around the world but also with the students that come through our door we are a student centered and a student focused environment uh that uh, is taking care of you and through all of the services that we have on our campus 
to make sure that you're successful not only at school, but also in your professional life. Um, uh, we have a presentation with, uh, uh, with Ms. Nevers. Um, uh, I would like to see if I can share my screen with you. Um, can you lend me access? Um, or do you, do you guys have the presentation? can help out one moment here. Thank you. Thank you, Wojtek. I, I have it here. I'll be sharing the screen in one moment. Fantastic. Okay, are you able to see my screen? I can. There we are. Thank you. Um, if I may start, I would like to, um, actually I would, I'd like to voice some uh, personal comments at this time. Um, you know, I, I have the benefit, I think, of having my mother's skin in that I think I look younger than I am. So I look in the audience and I see so many young faces and I envy those young faces because you have opportunities to grow and learn uh, for a longer time than, than, uh, than I have. And um, I think it's very, very exciting to explore opportunities uh, of educational growth forever and always as has already been announced that we never stop learning. So for myself, I have three younger people in my life being my children. I have a 24 year old son who just completed his undergrad and master's degree at Sacred Heart in the field of accounting. And he'll be starting his professional career hopefully next month online with COVID but he got his start here at Sacred Heart and he tells me, you know, that he greatly appreciated the time that he spent here at the university. And I have a set of twin girls who follow behind him. They're uh, 20 years old, soon to be 21 years old, and they are starting out their career, academic career, and one of them is at Sacred Heart. Now, keep in mind, they were twins, so they did not want to go to the same institution. Uh, otherwise, all three of my children will have graduated from Sacred Heart, and I still have time to get the other child here for her graduate study, so we will see what happens with that. Um, I've had the pleasure of being at the university for 21 years, and uh, it's the second uh, institution where I've recruited students, so my profession has been in the recruitment industry, and um, I've had great pleasure of, of traveling to India, having had an opportunity to travel to many countries, but India is a country to which I have returned more often than others. Uh, I have an appreciation and affinity you know, towards the, my experiences with the Indian students who I have met, and I can delightfully say many of them have become my friends. And when you're in an industry like I am, a profession like I am where you see someone come at a certain particular phase in their life and then graduate in a very short time to go on to the next phase of their life and then you see them grow in their professional experience and they come back to you and oftentimes shouldn't be me that they're thanking but they thank me you know for having given them the opportunity and I say to that I, I was only the gatekeeper. I was the one who organized the paperwork and explained the university to you. You were the one and you will be the one to take it to the next level. So continue to explore your options and your opportunities and think of life today as just the next phase in the next phase. Because with COVID, I think we've all learned that you don't know what can happen. You don't know what will happen. So to this, I, I leave you with those thoughts and uh, encourage you to, explore your options, and I thank our colleagues uh, to, for the introduction of Sacred Heart to you. So you will be exploring opportunities with Sacred Heart for the next year, two, or three, depending on where you are at in your, your program of study. So myself and Dr. Wojtek are here for you and will continue to be here after this presentation for quite some time. So 
Let me just explain ever so br briefly um, some basics about the University of Sacred Heart University. We are located in the United States. We are in the city, uh, the town of Fairfield in the state of Connecticut. That places us in between the state of New York and the state of Massachusetts, which most people understand to be New York City and Boston. So your uh, drive to New York City would be about an hour and 15, an hour and a half, depending on traffic, depending if you're taking the train. And then into Boston, you're just an hour past that at two and a half hours. So it's a, it's a beautiful area. In, in the United States. Um, this is, I'm not from the state of Connecticut, but I'm from what is called the New England area, which this time of the year is vibrant with beautiful changing trees of color. Um, the flowers are kind of dying, but the colors come out as we head towards fall. And then we'll be in uh, winter and then spring for a little bit and then back into summer. So uh, a location like Sacred Heart, you will experience the what we call the four seasons. And um, again, this, this particular area has rich opportunities for students to do uh, internships and then moving on advancing with the help of our Career Service Center into uh, work opportunities. And I'm very, very proud to say that a statistic just came out, which I'm not sure if my colleague, uh, Dr. Wojtek is familiar, but our uh, Immigration Support Service Center has indicated to me that we have um, 125 H-1B issued students within the last um, month or so. And this is a fantastic statistic in light of a lot of conversation that I know is happening in, in, the, in the country of India and others where concerns about the, the B visa, the H-1B visa for future employment. So there's certainly more information to follow on that, but for a small institution like Sacred Heart, that is a fantastic statistic for us to be very, very proud of, which means that the students who are graduating from Sacred Heart have the programs, they're graduating in the programs that employers want, and they're graduating with the skill sets that employers want. So I'll advance the slide and give you a little bit more information when they, about- When they get that experience, those companies are willing to sponsor them for the H-1B visa, which is the key here. What is the yes. key here is that those students get education at Sacred Heart that prepares them for work in the industry. And that's why that same industry wants to hire them on a more permanent basis. An H-1B visa is a visa that is the first very solid step to the green card in the United States for those of you or your colleagues or anyone you know to try to make their life and career into the United States. Many come back, which is also great, but many have the opportunity to stay. And I'm, wow, this is a very, very, very good statistic, Corey. 125 new H-1Bs to Sacred Heart Islands. This is something that we can be very proud of. Yes, and to explain it a little more uh, deeply is that a student, when you come to Sacred Heart, you'll arrive in the United States on a, on a uh, I-20, um, excuse me, on a F-1 visa, which is a student visa. And from there, as what has been mentioned earlier, you ha um, will graduate and have an opportunity to do OPT, the optional tra practical training. And from there, the opportunity to secure uh, an H visa. So that is honestly such a skeleton um, explanation and something that can be discussed and researched on your behalf later. But so let me continue to advance our conversation here. Just to give you a quick overview of Sacred Heart, uh, we have a growing number of undergraduate students. So undergraduate students is, is the first degree. It's also known as a bachelor's degree. So we have about 4,900 and growing uh, undergraduate students who are leaving high school and coming to us for um, a major of study, any, a variety of majors of study. And then at the graduate level, we have a growing number of graduate students who, ha it has been mentioned, you can go from your undergrad seamlessly into your grad, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a couple of more slides. To give you a sense of um, the surrounding area, I told you that where the town and the city and the state and so on that we're located in, we also uh, have some rankings of um, uh, safety because safety is very very important to students so we were ranked uh, the seventh number 11th safest town within the United States by SafeWise very very proud of this um, 
the opportunity for students you know, to, to graduate with a degree from a university that is nationally ranked within USU's enrolled report. That is a most regional, recent ranking for us as far as the national ranking is concerned. It's very, very tough to, to jump into that um, ranking system, but we did it and we're gonna climb in that ranking system as we go within the next uh, years ahead. The AACSB, very, very important. It is the highest accreditation that a business university can achieve worldwide. So with that accreditation, fewer than 5% of the world uh, institutions have the AAC SB accreditation. So this is something that you would place on your CV in the future to indicate to others who have also graduated from AAC SB institutions. It's an acknowledgement of quality. I'm going to advance a little bit more and along the way um, remind you that these slides that you're seeing we, I know these students. Um, this is Katomi. Katomi's on the left-hand side. She was a student from Japan who joined us. You'll see on the lower right-hand side, we have a rich history of working uh, and, and welcoming and graduating students from India. So we celebrate Holi and Diwali. Um, we we uh, share many, many stories, which we don't have time to go into all of them about our graduates, our proud graduates who have come from India. I'm going to continue here just to show you some more slides. All of these slides, again, they're not photo stock. They're all Sacred Heart University slides. Just to give you some breadth and understanding of the campus, it's a very beautiful campus. It's a very park-like. It's very green. Uh, the campus in the fall is happening right now, the picture on the top right. And the picture on the top left is a campus where we used to be. Uh, we are still there. We're physically housed here, but we have exploded in size. We have uh, doubled the size of our campus within the last three or four years because we acquired the former world headquarters of General Electric. General Electric had a campus that was equal in size to Sacred Heart. It's less than a mile down the street. We have incorporated their campus into our campus. It is now the site of Sacred Heart University's West Campus, which is where so many uh, new components of technology, and I, I have a few slides of those, but to be honest with you, if you jump onto the YouTube and you started to do some of the, view some of our video footage that we have of our facilities, you will be impressed. Dr. Wojtek, please, if you have any comments to make along the way, you know, in the audience, I will not be talking forever, I promise. Um, I just want to make sure that we give you a full breadth and understanding of the university. This is just a slide to show you all the things to do outside of the, of the uh, learning experience, of the classroom. Right now, some of these activities are not fully functioning as the way they used to be, but we are a fully functioning institution even though we have COVID. So we have residents on campus, we have activities that are happening, we have students getting together in, in, in allotted um, uh, groups and all. So when you're a student here, we, we hope for you, we wish for you, we almost expect that you will explore opportunities outside of the classroom. So go to a concert, for example, go to a show choir event, Go to the, the orchestra that we have, the band, the marching band. Go to a basketball game. Go to an ice hockey game. I'm not so sure you're going to have an opportunity to go to an ice hockey game when you live in India, but an opportunity to talk about how you went to ice hockey games when you were at Sacred Heart University uh, after you've experienced it is, is something that you'll be able to share with your friends. It's a unique experience, I will say. Uh, again, some more footage of the university. As an undergraduate student, you'll be, have the opportunity to live on campus. Our graduate students find housing you know, throughout the community, and there's a strong connection uh, of, of, uh, through Facebook and through social media where uh, Indian students meet one another, and there's a, very, a, a lot of support that happens with finding uh, off-campus housing for the graduate student. But, the undergraduate student, these are some amenities. Again, these are not stock photos. These are real residential life experiences uh, where students can live and learn and eat and grow. And we const constantly continue constructing other buildings and other um, accommodation facilities at Sacred Heart University to make sure that those of you who decide to stay with us on campus have the ability to do that. And, also because we are a residential university we keep you busy like uh, Ms. Nevers mentioned both in and outside of the classroom environment so this is why we have a lot of things happening all the time 
all sorts of concerts, but also tournaments. Right now we're doing all sorts of outdoorsy tournaments where students don't have to be in a very direct contact, stay outside. The weather has been treating us very well this summer and fall. It hasn't been too hot and it hasn't been too cold. So we're doing a lot of stuff that tries in an attempt to get you engaged, but still socially distanced in a way that, that uh, uh, informs the safety of your uh, self and, and of the entire campus community. This is very important to us. This yep. is the West Campus, and, and Ms. Nevers will speak more uh, uh, elaborately on this, but uh, it's, it's a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, you will see uh, in the picture on the left, uh, the, the right side of it, it's actually a, a hotel that is a laboratory for our hospitality management students in the future that used to ha a house. There were, what, 26 rooms in this facility? for CEOs of different companies who wanted to come in and meet Jack Welch and discuss some business opportunities. When you're standing in front of the main entrance, you don't see it as a hotel. You have to look at it from above to see that this, to realize this is actually an architectural peril uh, and a very, very interesting uh, 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 place that is now also just like all Jack Welch's current buildings, an actual living laboratory where knowledge is not just given to students, but it's also made with students and by students as well. Corey? Absolutely. That's an excellent point. Whenever we've done renovations at the university, we always have the student in mind. We want the students to come together. We want them to be in an environment where they can socialize with faculty, with other students, with staff. And you'll see, you might be able to need a little bit of an imagination with some of these still photos. But um, the photo in the middle is our idea lab. It's a maker space. It is probably four times larger than this photo that you're seeing here. But you can see in the photo, there's a faculty member uh, over the shoulder of a current student. And this space is not just for those who are studying engineering. It welcomes all walks of academic interests where students, if you have an idea, literally an idea that you want to try out, you want to create a prototype, this is where you go. You might be studying computer science, but you have an idea that interacts with cybersecurity or nursing students who are coming up with different ideas uh, for to help with patients. So it's, a, it's intended to bring students together and students can make um, objects and then they can use them in the real world and then go back and re reorganize them. But it's, a, it's an inter disciplinary opportunity. The finance lab, completely new, you know, for those of you who might be interested in the business area, it's a huge space um, and uh, we have uh, Bloomberg terminals in which we're training our students for the finance industry. Artificial intelligence lab, we're, we're actually, that lab is so new, we're learning how to use it. We're learning how to integrate it into student life and faculty life. And so um, I'm gonna head on to the next slide. And uh, again, more experiences where students and the outside world come to the inside world. The, the um, uh, recreation center for the students is spectacular. The Verizon co-working space, this is on the bottom right hand corner. This is where we have outside industries come in and, and rent uh, space where they're engaging students in internships. Uh, and they're also, uh, they're permanently housed through their rental experience at Sacred Heart. And there's a variety of different uh, uh, outside companies that have now made Sacred Heart their home because they want to be around the, the students, they want to be around the beautiful campus, and they want to be around um, other uh, employers who are looking uh, at the young, the youth of the 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 university environment, and so that they they can grow uh, with the students and grow their industries as well. So outside of the classroom, I think I've ex explained this quite a bit. We we have a very vibrant, interactive, uh, engaging opportunities for students to participate. We have uh, an actual office that will help students understand what opportunities are available here to explore your growth outside of the classroom. Again, just trying to share with you the breadth and depth of the university. We have um, a, a separate uh, communications program, some outstanding um, 
technology that students will use, but most important, all of these components, all of these, the cameras, the, 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 the board, the videos, the green room, they're all hands-on opportunities that students, you will use this, infer, this, these, this technology when you're here. It is not reserved just for graduate students if you're an undergraduate student. And quite often there's uh, times where, where the, it's an open door policy. You know, you need, you need the facility, you can use the facility. You talk to a faculty member, you get access to the facility. So that, that's who we are here, you know, student engagement, faculty engagement, faculty will know who you are, they'll know you by name, and it's very, very important to us. Uh, again, to give you academically, we've got undergrad, we've got grad, we've got English language that's available for students, and we have short-term summer program that's available. So these opportunities are, uh, give, depending on where you're at in the academic, in your academic interest, I'm fairly certain there is something for you to consider at Sacred Heart. I'm not going to belabor this point. This is our undergraduate programs. Uh, this information, of course, is online. But the fact that we have a variety of programs of study, and this is not all of them, but we have the arts. We have academic, uh, excuse me, we have the arts, we have education, uh, we train teachers, we train nurses, we train physical therapists, we train business, we train computer science, cybersecurity, engineering, and so on. So it's, you, you will come across a lot of foot traffic at the university with a variety of different interests. Graduate program, the same. What, is, uh, what I'd like to point out on this particular slide is that the listings on the left column, anything that is red, those are STEM related programs. So those programs are the ones that will allow you to stay in the universe, uh, stay in the United States for up to three years after you complete the degree. So this, these few slides that I, the undergrad and the grad slides, I say are my slides in that if you have questions about any of these programs or questions about the layout of the sequence or how long it takes, how do you transition from undergrad to grad, that's me. You can contact me and we can talk specifically about your individual interests and needs and questions. I'm not sure, you know, uh, Wojtek, please, you know, join me in, in your experience of working at the university with the students, but it, I cannot emphasize enough to the students. You will be here as a, as a, um, as a partner with your faculty and with your other students. You'll be doing group work. You'll be doing individual work. You'll have hands-on experience. We'll give you, you know, opportunities to do um, uh, research and so on. So Dr. Wojtek, if there's anything you'd like to add, please. These students as they, you know, outside of the United States, uh, and I come from outside of the United States myself, as they engage in their undergraduate studies in universities, in most countries around the world, maybe with the exception of the US and Canada, they go directly into the programs of their studies. And the majority of the courses they take are in the future field of their work. Um, so you apply to the university and you apply to the department and once you get there, you know, if, if you're admitted to the department of math, 90% of your classes are in mathematics. If you're in the department of English, 90% of the courses you take are from English. The United States uh, historically has been very famous and very well known to provide on an undergraduate level a very multidisciplinary kind of interdisciplinary kind of liberal arts focused education where we give you very rounded information where you both read literature and you do engineering when you study history as well as math. First of all, for you to try to acquaint yourself with the other disciplines to see if maybe there are some strengths within you that you never explored before and that you never knew before. But secondly, also to give you that qualitative as well as quantitative approach to life, when you can understand the, and, and appreciate the beauty of a poem and a literary arc and, uh, art, uh, art piece, as well as a, a painting or a musical piece, as well as the beauty of the robot that you're constructing or an algorithm that you are that you're developing together with your faculty members. That's what American education is very famous for. And we worked very closely with Indrashley University while producing uh, the meaningful three plus one MOU 
uh, we will give you that other aspect of it as well. So after being charged with a lot of work with the discipline, you will come to the United States to also appreciate a certain number of courses that will give you that other, excuse me, that other aspect. But uh, uh, most of this will be done in the AACSB accredited Jack Welch Blockchain Business and Technology because our MOU, our two plus, uh, three plus one program is developed in the area of computer science, but we also, from where you can also move on to master degrees in, in cybersecurity and other disciplines as well. The fact that you will earn a bachelor's degree in computer science does not mean that you will not be able to, to move into healthcare informatics or business analytics or cybersecurity by all means. All of these programs are, are, are structured in a way that you can seamlessly move on to similar domains, not entirely other domains. You won't be able to get a master's in uh, literature after a computer science specialty, but uh, uh, within a, a, a college of business and technology, you will have, you will have choices to, uh, to make. Many people do MBA on top of their computer science. Um, Abhinand is an engineer, an engineer with an MBA. And it's a very good example of, of how to trigger mm -hmm. your, your business side as well. Uh, what is important is that you will be in small groups working very closely with the faculty uh, member with a very hands-on instructional method. And you probably notice that maybe some of you have heard that when, when uh, the presentation was about, um, about the focuses of the activity in Indra Ashley University, there was a strong focus on internship programs, faculty training, guest lectures, live projects and research, setting up the Internet of Things, augmented the reality lab, establishing uh, agreements for skill development, industry-specific course curriculum, teaching and learning support at Ibn Rashid University. You get all this at Sacred Heart University as well. And this is why it was so easy for us to sign an agreement with Ibn Rashid University, because this is precisely what we do as well. We focus on these, on these skills and uh, conti will continue to give you the American perspective on the developing of those skills. So emphasizing both the theoretical, but equally as importantly, the practical aspects and the leadership aspects of your work. You will have a lot of research opportunities. You will have, as Ms. Never said, in those idea labs, a very hands-on instructional method. Together with very few students, you will be creating new knowledge, and that's so exciting for us. Right at the heart of the head, global headquarters of, glo of, of uh, of a General Electric company, which used to be the largest business uh, on earth. Um, so it's turned itself from being a large business on, on earth to one of the largest incubators of new knowledge in the domains of business and engineering and computer science. It's very exciting and proximity to New York and Boston gives you ample opportunities, not just for travel, but also for, for your work experience after you graduate. Um, what's on the next slide? Sure. I think more of the same. I, I'll, I'll move along. Um, thank you for your comments. That was great. Yeah, the industry guest speakers that we've mentioned, all of these things are happening, yes. Um, oh yeah, now I'll move to explain the, the partnership itself in Joshua University and Sacred Heart. Uh, per our agreement that we've uh, negotiated very quickly because it was so easy. Um, for the first three years of your studies, you will be at Indrashi University and for one final year, you will come to the United States. And it is indeed correct and tr true. It is enough to study in the United States for one year to acquire the possibility and opportunity to apply for optional practical training. So if any one of you has doubts that, oh, it's only a year, will I be able to work? Yes, you will. Uh, not only because it's, uh, it's the minimum length of time that's required in the United States to earn the opportunity to do the optional practical training, but also because this MOU is structured in a way that after that one year, you will also get a degree from Sacred Heart University. So you will end up with two degrees, two bachelor degrees, uh, both one from uh, Indrash University and one um, uh, uh, from Sacred Heart University, Corey's office, of international admissions, as well as my office of global affairs, and a few other offices will be working together on each and every one of you. Uh, you will each become a case, uh, then you will become an admit, and then you will become a friend uh, of Sacred Heart University. 
Uh, we have um, scholarships available to you. Um, uh, you will be living with us or um, nearby Sacred Heart University up to you. Uh, you will be admitted as seniors, so you, it, there will not be a requirement for you to live on campus. We encourage you to do so, of course, to make a full use of our facilities and you know your long-lasting, lifelong friendships. This is where they happen. But if you opt to do to go for an, an outside uh, or external housing opportunities, we will we will help you out with that as well. Um, what's next? Um, yes. So speaking about the scholarships, um, Corey, would you like to take that? So uh, upon receipt of your academic information, your transcripts, which would uh, be supplied with your application, we have an opportunity in the admissions office to review to determine your uh, scholarship amount. So depending on the grade point average, which is calculated on a 4.0 scale, you will receive a particular dollar amount. And we will inform you of this uh, dollar amount at the time that you are offered admission. So it is based on grade point average. So I encourage you to continue to do well because the, the closer you are to the 4.0, the higher your academic award is. So, um, and these are parameters that are put in place as of today and the values are subject to change as we advance and usually will go higher and not lower. Just a few um, supportive services that are available when you're a student here. It's not just admissions. It's not just Dr. Wojtek's office. Uh, it's not just uh, immigration and support services and it's not just student affairs and student life and residential living. It's all of that. You know, you come to us and we care for you. We will, we, will be, we will guide you through the process from the beginning through the end and we'll be at graduation as well. So uh, to experience our graduation is um, it's a huge celebration and many, many, many most actually uh, students that I know from India have had their families come and join them in the celebration. So. When you're here, you're here and we're with you and we will work with you and support you and guide you and encourage you to explore outside your comfort zones and get to know a little bit more about yourself. And then the career planning and placement happens too along the way. So training for job interviews, uh, creating your CV, going to events on campus where we have employers come to campus and meet with prospective students where you will you know, be professionally dressed and distribute your resume and have conversations with um, prospective employees or internship opportunities that all happens on site. We have employers come uh, to Sacred Heart and interview students, as well as we have them in larger forums. So we have a very, very active career planning and placement office. I call them like the second layer in a sandwich, the second piece of bread. I'm the first piece of bread and they're the second piece of bread and everything else is in between, meaning that I help the students, I guide them through the process of being admitted and making sure their paperwork is all ready for acceptance. And then career helps students in the planning and the placement and the education about your visa and how it transitions from being a student to being a, 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 an employee. Um, which has been discussed earlier, you can transition from completing your undergraduate degree seamlessly in completing your master's degree at Sacred Heart, and it can be, as has been discussed, a separate program of interest. So you might come with uh, finishing a program in computer science and then go into finance as a graduate program, or do cybersecurity and then go into digital marketing at the graduate level. They can be two different programs to different tracks, but they're, they should always be about you and your interests, you and your future career. As was mentioned when we first started and the accolades that were given by previous speakers and the breadth and depth of their life experience, it grows over time. So whatever you're going to be studying as an undergrad can be different than what you're studying as a grad and then your future career, all of those experiences can be different and build on one another. Um, so 
We do offer that easy transition. And when you come to the United States on a student visa for Sacred Heart, if you start as an undergrad and then work your way into a master's program, very simple. You don't have to go through the visa application process again. We just transfer your program from a bachelor's degree to a master's degree. It's paperwork. It's done on site. It's done by our uh, um, immigration support service office. So very simple, very easy. This slide's been shared uh, earlier. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, Dr. Wojtek and I, we are here for you and uh, our colleagues know how to reach us as well. So I, I open it to uh, refer back to, I will stop sharing my screen in the event that. This agreement, this MOU is proof that we have an actual living relationship with your university. Um, negotiated quickly, signed efficiently, we're ready for you. Uh, and we're looking forward to welcome you in our doors and for you to continue your education towards dual degrees and maybe a master's degree. An ideal path would be to get the dual degrees then come to us, continue with us in a master's degree and then come back to Indrashen for a PhD. This would be, a, this would be an, an excellent path for you and uh, we wish you all the best. We're here, we can, you can contact us directly, we will write to you. Uh, so we're not robots, we're humans, we reply to emails, we are in communication with everyone. And we're looking forward to hosting you on our campus. This relationship is wonderful, it's developing phenomenally, um, and we just hope that you will manage to make that decision um, and, and step into our door and off to a career into the United States. So thank you again. Uh, Dr. Amish uh, Abinant, uh, Dean Barty. Uh, what a pleasure to see you all, and we're looking forward to answering any questions that may uh, that you may. Yeah, thank you, Corey, and thank you, Dr. Wojtek, for giving such a super presentation. I'll just tell you, if it would have been 26 years back, I would have landed up there, and done four plus one. You know, bypassing yep. everything. You know, because. You know, after everything, master's degree also, you have to go through visa process and exam and everything. You are straight away giving a very lucrative offer. Nobody can deny that. If I had been, my son has been 18 years old, I would have said, go there. Now I'd like, you know, all the kids, even if the parents are there, to ask question. Please be open to ask question if you have any doubt. Even if you have some doubt or anything which is remaining, you can always reach to our admission team with uh, Kandar, Anuj, Shashwat, Bhavika, anybody is there. And then you can approach me at the campus along with Dr. Amish Vyas. Along with the memorandum of understanding, we have uh, developed the frequently asked questions. So um, in Drashli University representatives who are collecting uh, some potential questions from you. Um, so they are in possession of, of many actual working answers to, to your actual working questions. Yeah, uh, I think so I'm very confident that, uh, that uh, the team there is perfectly capable to answer any and all questions regarding the process. Uh, you have to start at Indrashil, that's sine qua non, uh, the yeah. agreement between the two institutions. So once you're admitted into Indrashil, I'm sure you, the, the team there will be able to answer any questions. And if not, then within a day, we will get back uh, with details when, when questions arise. The paperwork is simplified. Uh, yeah. We don't need to evaluate all the degrees and transcripts and so on and so forth because we've already articulated the program. We know almost certainly what kinds of classes you will be taking when you when you are at Sacred Heart University after you complete your three years at uh, Team Drashil. The process, in other words, is absolutely seamless. Such, uh, Corey has given her number. They can always reach her or can reach here at our team also. I'd like to acknowledge and thank everyone for their patience. Um, yeah. You know, online, constant online communication, um, you know, can be can be challenging. 
it can be exhausting, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm very, at the same time, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity, you know, to get together. And I cannot wait to get myself both feet on the ground back in India soon. Me too. I've been... I look forward to seeing you well and at the ICAMAS. Both of us have actually been in Ahmedabad as well uh, in, yeah. at some points in our career. Uh, so we know Gujarat and, and are appreciative of, of your um, history and culture and, and industries that, that you have. There are a lot of things happening in Gujarat and now uh, the Gujarat name is uh, repurposing in the US election. You know, I was looking after, you know, the Indian background, which is come from Trump's side and the Kamala Harris background coming from the Indian side. So mm -hmm going through all that part and probably today evening, we both are going to watch the much awaited debate. <laughs> Very true. I can't wait to I, seven o'clock. I, I have a personal funny story to tell. So last night I was at home and I went into a frenzy. I was like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta turn on the debate. I gotta turn on the debate. And then I realized it was Monday. It wasn't Tuesday and tonight <laughs> is the night. <laughs> Oh, watch what's gonna what what's gonna happen to me is I'll probably get busy doing something and then I'll completely forget that it's Tuesday. I'm I'm off by a day. I'm ahead by a day and then I'm off by a day. So what are you gonna do? But yeah, tonight. This is tonight. our reality, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you work across time zones and you have presentations at 3 a.m. and then yeah. suddenly you realize it's Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, but it's 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 what we what we live, and that's what we do. And you will, when you meet us in person, you will realize that you're you're um, you know engaging with with passionate people who yeah. absolutely love every minute of our lives. And you will see the same with our professors and all the lab people you will interact with, and so on. Um, I understand reluctance, so you know, feel free to write us. Feel free to to visit the office when you have a chance. At Indrashi University, we're always here for you. Um, so, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, yeah thank so you wish very much everyone the best of health. Yeah, and thanks for a really good presentation. That was on the punch. And I look forward to the kids coming up there and building their future and career. You know, that's what I always love to see. The younger generation has to move forward to the right place. Same here. Such is the right place. That's why we have partnered with them. Have you got you and I, you and I, Abhinant, are very good yeah. examples of that. We've we've made yeah. our careers coming through the United States. Or yeah. I came from somewhere else and I made it in the U.S. You you yeah. came through the U.S. and you made it back in India. Yeah. So our stories only prove that that you can really be very successful in in your careers if you take that leap across the Atlantic. It provides yeah. a lot of opportunities for you. It really does. I have to admit. Yeah. They just have to take a leap forward. Yeah. I give an example of India's business tycoon who moved out of his place. It's, you know, moving all the barriers out and became developed reliance. He got the experience of outside. You, know, you have to learn the culture. You will get a lot of people from various countries. And that's the true experience which you get in. Yeah, yes. very much so. So keep at it, everyone. Keep yeah, at it. Thank you. Very true. Okay. So uh, thank you, Corey. We'll be in touch with you, Vertec. And let's say thank good very much. kids. Okay, bye. Thank you to all of you. What a pleasure. Bye. Stay well, you. please. Stay well. Yeah.